with one subject so here's the story there's a lot of story that attached to this one but I make this as short as possible I don't want to bore nobody so I'm gonna make this as short as possible so I grew up in the country and later on migrated to the other parish two parishes I grew up in the country education grew up with my grandparents by the way and education was not on the forefront of their brain i think they did not think that education was so so important not like nowadays whose parents are more open to certain things and education and see that is it is indeed important they didn't think that way because they themselves were not very educated and they didn't go to school I remember we were talking about education one day and my grandfather was saying that he only he didn't go to school not even one day he the only time he knew about school was when he was sitting by the classroom outside where his house was he was living close by and he would go there to listen to the students in class and he would wish that he would go to school so for his his thing is that you are lucky that you went to school at least but i didn't go none at all my grandmother on the other hand her story was that she went to school only in grade one and that's it for her she taught herself to read the bible to read other books and 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 can i tell you when you hear my grandmother talk my grandmother was one of the most intelligent person i know i know anywhere can talk to anybody can go anywhere do any business i don't know how she did it but that is how she was but for them education was not so important for them you only need to have a house you have to have food to eat money to spend and that's it they didn't think otherwise so I end up living with them because my father was murdered from an early age. My father was 23 when he was murdered in Kingston. And so my grandmother took me as their child. I guess they were, and, and, and for them over the years while I was with them, they would always talk about my father and how good of a child he was to them. So, I mean, I was like the replacement, anybody who, go with the grandparents and lost the, the parents you understand what I'm talking about so I was there living with them and till uh, it was time for me to do common entrance now for me to do common entrance I had a struggle there too because I was not registered at birth so they had no birth certificate for me so there was a struggle there until they were trying to get me to do six um, um, common entrance but then my grandmother fell ill she had to move into Kingston she was diabetic and so she had to move into Kingston she was admitted in Uwe in Kingston so she went into Kingston so I was left at home with my grandfather because it was only three of us living in the house at the time big house it was only three of us in the house and I was there with him my grandfather was a farmer and he had cows he had goats he has pigs he has a whole acres a land of yam and cocoa edos for those living children we're talking about edos and we're talking about dashing and all kind of thing so he will sell these products to the 
export market, like the yams and the dashin and the the cocoa and the edibles, he would sell them to the international market. The exporters would come with the truck and expect the, the thing and pay him for it. So I was the one who used to go in the farm to help him to cook the meal for the men because we had men working who were helping to do So sometimes they were reaping yam from the Monday straight back to the Friday, two weeks, and they would dig those yams, put them on a pile. No thieves would trouble them, cover them with something, and that's how it is. So sometimes I wouldn't be at school for like two weeks because when that season comes in, I have to be there to cook. And as a little girl, I would be there to cook because even when um, sometimes when my grandmother would come in the field, she would just sit on a stool and I would be there with a big pot. Those of us who know what I'm talking about, the big heavy duty pots, I would be around one of those cooking, climb on two blocks or on a stool and she would tell me what to put in the pot and stuff like that. And um, Talking about cooking, it would be either cooking for like 25 people, 20 people. So that's how it is. So it ended up that she went into Kingston, got sick, went into Kingston, got admitted. I was there with my grandfather. So I decided I'm not staying. I'm going to run away. So I ran away. I took one of those big bus that went to Kingston. Those of us who know from Jamaica who knows the big bus, um, Confidence and the Karen and those type of buses we would i take one of those buses into kingston because i knew the address where she was at and i i have the address in my head so when i reach because that's the first time i went to kingston i used to cheat my grandmother used to put me on the bus and send me to my aunt with food yam and all kind of thing and i would come back just to see me by myself them times that nobody not trouble children, nobody not kidnap you or rape you or not. everybody take care of you. So when I go on the bus and adults would be there, I sit beside them, I go where I'm going and I come back. So that's how I went up to Kingston. I went up to Kingston, my grandmother was there, I decided I'm not coming back. I want to live in Kingston. She came back and I didn't come back same time and then she sent for me. They said, I have to come home because I have to come and help them. So I went back home. Went back home and I was there. Common interest was gone, so this time now I have to do grade nine achievements. I was there in, in all age until ninth grade. Graduated ninth grade, top of my class, best student, head student, graduated with honors, trophy, everything I had, the trophy at home. I don't even know where that is now. And left there. So I entered high school. High school now was like about maybe about 20 miles away, far. So we had to take one of the same buses in the morning. Got to get up three o'clock in the morning, get ready, catch a bus by 4 a.m., head off to school. So then now, the time comes around when they had to reap their fees. I spent one, I went to grade, grade nine in high school, do that one year. When I when I entered 10th grade, it was time for them to reap and whatever. So I'd be stopping from school. Two weeks I don't go to school, one week I don't go to school. Three weeks I don't go to school. When I go to school, I am strange. The children would ask me, where are you coming from? Where you was? Sometimes I feel so bad. I went on with that, went on with that till I say, you know, I get fed up at this now. Before I reach there, <laughs> though, what I forgot to tell you is that in order to take my grade nine achievement exam, I needed my birth certificate. Now, as I said before, I was not registered at birth, so I had no birth certificate. My grandmother, on the other hand, did not know the correct spelling for my name either. So she gave me, she, I, I guess she had some communication with my mom some years ago or my dad, and they know that my name is Raquel because in the in where they had me, I was not called that name in pet name. I was given a name by my grandmother. So my grandmother called me her name. Her name was Salome. So she called me Salome. So everybody in the community know me as Salome. So time for me, when I'm going to school now, that name is Raquel. So she interpret the spelling. She didn't even know the spelling. So she just spelled R-O-C-K-E-L and gave it to the teacher and said, that's her name. So when I went to high school and it was time for the sign up for the grade nine achievement, they said, 
coming to the office they say what's your name i said my name is raquel they have said how it's spell i spell it just the same way like how my grandmother spell it because i thought that was the spelling they ask me my date of birth i tell them um they ask me my middle name no for my middle name i didn't know my middle name so I gave them a name. I remember I had a friend who was going to all age with us. So I gave her the name. She was Andrea. So I said, you know, I'm going to call myself Andrea. So I told her, I said, I am Raquel Andrea Simit. So they write it down in the register. So that's the name they had in high school for me. Uh, I don't know how I did the, 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 the grade 9 achievement. I don't remember. I have no idea. But I know I did the grade 9 achievement. And I reached high school. So I was in high school. So, alright. It was time now for, to prepare for CXC. So they started preparing the students from the 10th grade. So I was in high school. First, um, first term of the 10th grade. I was brilliant, doing well, doing well, doing well. My farm teacher was Mrs. Thompson, who she came up to me one day and she said, you're doing well because every, every maths test I have, I ace that 100%, 98%, 97%. She said, you're you doing good. Right. It ended up that it was more challenging for me in the home to get to school because the time, yam season, yam to young people to cook find the feel all kind of things so i end up i have to leave school the teachers at that time i wish uh i knew how to go and talk to somebody because we had a guidance company in school but then i didn't know i didn't understand that i could go to the guidance company because nobody knew what i was going through so i didn't talk to nobody i didn't tell nobody my problem i just just left I said okay i'm not going to school no more because it's hard for me to reach a school sometimes i don't reach a school two weeks three weeks i'm out of school so it was difficult so i said i'm gonna run away pack my bag went into kingston went to my aunt when i went to my aunt my grandmother said okay she's gonna send some money for me for my aunt to get me in a school she said she was trying to get me in a school i don't know how but i had no birth certificate and the school was asking her for a birth certificate my name everything she knew not my date of birth everything and can i tell you people <laughs> my date of birth that i have been using for all these years was incorrect so the name was wrong the only name was right was the last name was this smith so the, the date of birth was wrong the middle name was wrong the first name was wrong so everything was wrong and i was going along with that all these years and i did not get to find that out until when i reached university when um 2009 i found out that all those were incorrect anyways that's the next story for our next time so Went to Kingston, started working, and believe me, from that, I had worked in three different places in Kingston. And I was lucky that each time I walk into a place and I got an interview, I aced that interview and I start to work. Is that the manager you're going to say, you're going to start right away or can you come tomorrow morning? I always got you and I always do a good job wherever I go. And I remember between that time, I went back to the country maybe about three or four times during that period because my grandmother was always calling for me because she was always a praying grandmother who always praying for me and she was crying and she worrying about me because my father got murdered and i was in kingston and she was saying they're gonna kill you mind they kill you she worrying so i will always have this soft spot in my heart for her and I always go back home because she was the only one in my circle within that house that showed me real love and i really love her so i would go back home and then i went back home and i started caring for her so i cared for her like a few years and with that care for her i would comb her hair bathe her do everything now my grandmother was mixed with maroon so when i comb her hair her hair was silver gray and it would be long down here and i would comb her hair wash it plait it and she would just put her hand on my head and touch my head and she would say god bless you my granddaughter god bless you my granddaughter so i would just love that about her she was just a loving caring 
grandmother she miserably you know she didn't have a miserable choice but she cared deeply for me she even gave me her own name so you must know say you know grandmother's love and within that period um after that i entered the church i started to go to church i baptized i started to go to church and pastor came on there and she said he said you have to go to school you have to go to university what are you there because i went to start going to church and i start getting involved and they see my potential they give me student lead uh, give me um sabbath school leader sabbath school superintendent all kind of position i start to hold in the church so they said, oh, he said, okay, you need to go to university. So I said, okay, and I decided to go. Now, my grandmother, they didn't want me to go. They didn't want me to go. So, anyway, I went. And when I went, one subject I had. How I got that one subject? When I came back from Kingston, I went to the evening class at the same school I used to attend. And I went to classes maybe about three times because I couldn't get the time to go. So, I just go when I could and get one subject pay for the subject do the one subject went to class three times got a two in english language so that's the only thing i have tell the pastor i only have one subject he said i go and talk to them went to the university talk to them they say we will accept you on a provisional basis you can come in you can work as a student you can do your classes and get the research subjects so that is what i did i went and i got four other subjects so i ended up with five subjects but that journey was a struggle because going into university without a birth certificate, without uh, immunization, without nothing, it was a struggle for me because I wanted to do nursing. In order to get into nursing, you have to have immunization, you have to have birth certificate because the ministry... The nursing council needs all of those things and i didn't have that so that was a struggle indeed for me but praises be to god i got into university with my one subject and i stayed there and i struggled and i did my other subjects and i got five subjects and i started my program and i with all the fight and all the stress and all in between that the death of my grandmother and all of that Sufficing to say what I'm saying this and why I'm sharing this is that no matter the struggle in life, no matter the stress, no matter no matter the people tell you you can't do it, you can do it, you can do it. You there's nothing that's that you see before your eye that you say I want to go after this thing that you must feel like oh it's impossible it's not for me i am that i am not that bright i am i don't have five subjects and i have six subjects there are universities there are places that you can go and upgrade yourself you can go to an evening class you can get your subjects if you don't finish high school if you don't finish high school if you get pregnant in high school and you feel like this is the end no you can Get a little job, go back, ask for some help, get yourself your subjects, get into university. If that is what you really want to do, you can do it. You must put on a never give up attitude. Never give up attitude, no matter where or whatever circumstances you find yourself in. And I got into university with one subject and I will forever share this story and one day I hope to write my book where I will tell all these stories of how I navigate through life with so many challenges and I still hold on today I am not where I want to be where I need to be I think but I'm still pushing forward and there are many 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 stories there are many 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 things there are many many miracles that have been worked in my life that i've seen in my life because of my go getter attitude today put on a go getter attitude what do i say put on a go getter attitude and go for what you want no matter your age, no matter your status, no matter where you are, tell yourself that you 
can do it.